Well, let's talk about uh, financial advice from Justin Urquhart Stewart. He's an economist and chairman of the Regionally Investment Platform. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Were you taught were you taught financial advice and sort of money management at your school? No, nothing at all. It's absolutely ridiculous. And particularly, think we actually we educate people in mathematics. Well, mathematics surely. Why didn't you just put that together? To you, how much money do you need to have a pension? Yes. How much? How long does it take you to actually get that sum? How much does it give you? How do you pay a mortgage off? So yeah. if you combine those two, don't turn it into personal finance because that'll be dull as ditch water. Tell people how to get wealthy, how to look after yourself, and yeah. suddenly you've got a level of interest from people. Absolutely, it would be so useful, wouldn't it? I mean, a lot of this is really incomprehensible to most people. It's pretty incomprehensible to me, and I, I officially have an economics degree, for goodness sake. Let's talk about where we are, because the Financial Conduct Authority are meeting with major banks today uh, yeah. to discuss why um, everyone's mortgages have gone up, everyone's uh, everyone's cost of borrowing has gone up. We're looking at 7% mortgages this autumn, we're being told. Um, um, and, and, and yet, if you're a saver, you're still looking at 1% or 2%. The trouble is, the banking system's changed so radically. In days gone by, and I think you're talking to some of the old-fashioned bankers, that would be their defence today, they couldn't really make much money at anything below an interest rate of about 4 or 5%, yeah. because there'd be a gap between what they were lending and what they were uh, the, the savings rates. Um, and anything below that, it gets so narrow, it's barely anything at all. But, of course, most banks now make money out for other things, certain fees they charge us for, oh. you know, or what they charge us for, but they seem to charge us. Um, and so a lot more extra charges come out of other areas. But also, there's much more automation. So the cost of actually the difference between those two is actually now, now much, much lower indeed. So the bank's going to have to put up a pretty sharp uh, argument to say, why aren't they moving fast? I don't, yeah, I don't mind them making a profit. I mean, but but it, you, cannot, you cannot say, well, the cost of what we have to put that up, but we're just literally not even going to do anything uh, with, yeah. with, with your savings rates. I and mean, we're supposed to be encouraging people to save. I mean, you've, if you're in a position, you're lucky enough to be able to save right now. Well, lucky you. And you've got them. But we know that the cost of living is going to go up. We know interest rates are going to keep going up. Uh, you know, yet again, next month, we'll expect that. And, and we know that people coming off their, their fixed rate mortgages are facing a heck of a shock. Yeah. And more, I think, is it 4,000 people every day or something like that? It's a huge it's, number of people. Um, but yeah. we're also told that... Things are not going to get much better. The cost of living, off what Chief has said, that the water bills are expected to rise, prediction of up to 40% um, over the next year or so. An expectation that energy bills will go up again this winter. The Chinese economy rebounds. And if we get a, a cold winter, apparent, I keep being told we were lucky to have a mild winter. It did not feel mild in my house. I was cold all of last winter. But this is the thing. We, we are, it's, even as inflation starts to come down, we are not remotely out of the woods, are we? No, it's going to take an awful lot to change on a lot of these issues. Uh, one, you talk about uh, water and the power areas there. Well, of course, a lot of that's down to bad regulation, which has been a story that's been there for years, yes. even before they were privatised. Yep. Um, and I'm afraid that's just down to bad, bad control. And I do actually point to our politicians. There was something that was a, yep. a, a, a boil that needed lancing a long time ago. This year, over, over debt, again, education would have helped here. It doesn't really help very much now if you've got the debt. What you do, can try and do, though, is encourage people to think more as a family and less as an individual. I've mentioned this before. It's not always very easy to do. What do you mean by that? cross-generational. Well, as you think about it, hopefully now we've still got grandparents around. When you speak to them a lot, it's not the point. But um, <laughs> we've got parents and grandchildren. How do you actually... People think my child's never going to have a house. Well, the answer is, given the cost of houses in certain areas, that's not surprising. But they may inherit your house mm -hmm. and may inherit, actually, heaven forbid, your mortgage. Thinking yeah. about inheriting that debt this wow. be but is that depressing or is it more depressing say i'm going to work 60 years paying off a debt live for another 10 years <laughs> owning the house and then die no, well and then, then die and then he's going to go to my kids and they're going to pay 40 percent tax on it well that's another issue about the, the inheritance of it so it needs proper re reconstruction of that but really, well, really what we need is that trickle down look we know we've got that generation and my parents were lucky enough to be in it they're 79 and 80 you know that that baby boomer generation where they just you know every, all the public services were working and were free um and, and university education and good grammar schools and everything they've gone ahead they bought homes for sort of 20k that go you know worth a fortune now thank you very much final salary pension schemes you name it done very well and then the next generation down okay i'm under to get on the housing ladder, you know, just before I was 30. Next generation, they're going to really struggle. We know now average age people buying a home is now in their 40s. Well, you know, if you're a woman, you need to be having kids by then. I mean, we are we are in a really dire situation. We need, as you say, if we need to think generationally, parents who are in a position to help, I mean, and not everyone, most people aren't in a position their parents can help them substantially. Well, you know, we need to perhaps think, as you say, as a family in terms of, well, we, you know, we need more houses for a start.
Wealthy families do this. They have family offices. And you sit there and say, oh, that's a wealthy. No, the same thing applies to the Doris Bridge middle class. Exactly the same. Managing that cross, managing the debt. And of course, actually, your debt will be lower if you've actually got someone of older, earning more money, actually holding that debt because that seems mm-hmm. less of a credit risk. Mm-hmm. So all of these things can be managed across in a much more efficient manner. Now, do that in a way which is uh, you know, will help people, give people a bit more confidence. Now then, bear in mind that more people save in this country than actually uh, borrow. And they've had a lousy time for, yeah. uh, for the past decade because they did everything right. They paid down their debt. They made sure they got a lot of cash. And, and investments, and they were going to live off the interest on yeah. that. But well, interest at zero doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. So now they're getting a little bit, but you look at those interest rates, well, they're one or two at three or four percent, maybe, um, but most of them, as far as I can see at the moment, still barely getting about one percent. And with inflation running up, well, as we know, closer to the top end towards 10 percent, mm-hmm. it's still going to be losing money in real terms. Oh, if you've got a mortgage, I mean, I know uh, basically in this country, we've got a third of people who are in households are, are homeowners, they don't have a mortgage, mainly because they're older, they've paid it off. You've got a third of people who've got a mortgage, and a lot of people coming off those fixed rates, and you've got a third of people who rent. Um, I mean, that's basically the divide in terms of household. If you've still got a mortgage and you have any savings right now, would you be better off, given mortgage rates going up, if you're not on a fixed rate, actually ploughing that money as much as you can into your mortgage to cut those payments going out rather than saving? Because if you're not earning anything on the savings, is there any point... Pay down debt whenever you possibly can. That's because now you can you have some chance of control. Savings is another issue. Uh, different ways of going about it. Any chance at all, get rid of that debt because you don't know when those interest rates are going to go up. All right, again. and now some advice. Again, advice for, for, for kids at school and advice for people who are, you know, look, Benedict's sitting here thinking, talking about mortgages again, love to get one. So many millions of people desperate to get on the housing ladder. Really, you know, it doesn't matter how hard they work. I'm not including yeah. Benedict in that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they you know, can't get on the housing ladder. OK, what, what is the advice to people right now struggling? They, may have, they haven't got the savings, or if they do, they've got tiny savings, which are rainy day money. Uh, what, what, yeah. what's, what's the best financial advice for them right now? Right, best financial advice is not to look short term, try to look long term as to what they've got to try and do. Try and look across the family because their parents have got the issues as well. They don't want to pay more tax when they're dying. So actually have the conversation with the family to actually sit there and say, When are you planning to die? (laughs) Well, there are certain places you can go to try and book it, but I recommend that's not the case. (laughs) Um, But that the what you can do is that let's say whether it's uncles and aunts and other bits of pieces, everyone's got the same situation. Now I appreciate most people don't like talking about families, but there are people called financial planners, not advisors, just planners. That's all they do. And actually just organize that. Now most of it's frankly common sense. But if we just sit down and start that process, and then you start seeing, actually, you've started making some progress. You've got a little bit wealthier. You can work out that in 10 years' time, even at this rate, I would have doubled that or whatever we need to get to. And that gives you confidence if you could do that. And by the way, what do you do at school? You teach people, apart from, as you say, avoiding the word so and like, give them the confidence of being able to talk, getting people to do presentations, yeah. being able to stand up. And if you've got confidence, and actually then you learn actually the old language will start to improve. Also, you, you start you, talking about language, the word the language disappears immediately. And then also you can bluff your way through with a pair of red braces and <laughs> and a big dress like me. We've shh, they haven't caught on to us yet. They have caught on to us. <laughs> Justin Ercott Stewart, always a pleasure, sir. 8.33 is the time. Uh, we'll talk to Bluffer. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> the Conservative commentator, uh, Benedict Spence, in just a few moments. I'm also going to talk to you, the Shadow Education Secretary, Bridget Phillipson, about this uh, ability, well, this, this ability, this bid to shatter the class ceiling. This is Talk Breakfast.